Okay, thank you very much. That was fantastic. And I think um, what Larry did there was to sum up why we need economists to help us deal with these weighty issues. Can we have the lights, please? Um, I want to uh, introduce Peter Sands, who's our workshop chair and has organized this workshop, invited all the speakers and pulled together the agenda for today, and is also going to um, manage the two days um, uh, uh, proceedings. Peter has um, uh, started his career off at the UK Foreign and Commonwealth Office. He worked at McKinsey Consulting um, and then joined Standard Charter, where he, he rose to um, the group chief executive for almost 10 years and then joined the board. Um, since then, he's focused as well as working on risk around health and, and development of um, tech and, and uh, medical technology companies. He's worked with the National Academies on a number of key issues, including ensuring access to affordable drugs, um, chairing the International Working Group on Financing Preparedness, and the Global Health Risk Framework for the Future, which deals with pandemic risk. Um, he's a fellow research for the um, Harvard Kennedy School, School of Public Health and Global Health Institute, and recently became Executive Director of the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis and Malaria. So you'll see that Peter Sands is ideally suited to dealing with these very weighty and interesting issues. So please welcome Peter Sands. Thank you. Well, it's a good thing uh, we had Larry speak, because otherwise you would think that everybody in this session is going to be called Peter. Um, <laughs> Uh, and Larry, in his inimitable way, manages to kind of steal the show even when he's not here. Um, but I think he set the scene, actually, uh, very well. It's no surprise, I think, um, to any of you in the room that microbial threats pose a huge burden and risk to economics, quite apart and in addition to the threat um, they pose to human lives. But actually, economic policymakers very rarely consider microbial threats when making economic decisions. It would be a very unusual thing for uh, a minister in a treasury or a central bank to actually be seriously pondering a microbial issue when making an economic um, decision. And it would only really be in extreme circumstances like a, a, a major infectious disease outbreak. Um, secondly, um, there is this issue of the use of economic tools around trade-offs and choices and resource allocation, um, which are used in global health, but are also uh, resisted um, quite often in the world of um, global health. I, um, in my new role, have already encountered circumstances where when we raise the issue of a trade-off, we have only so much money to spend on malaria where do we deploy it, um, how do we use it, where the answer is given, that's not an acceptable question to be asking. Well, my view is, I understand the moral dilemmas there, um, but I only have so much money. Um, and, and therefore, in one way or another, we are going to make those trade-offs, and you either make them explicitly, using the best available data and tools, or you make them implicitly, and I would suggest that the optimal answer is going to be the former rather than the latter. Obviously, there has been quite a lot of work done um, in different organizations, academic institutions, um, around um, the risks, the threats of microbial, the, the economic risks and burdens of microbial threats. Um, but I would suggest that, uh, A, it is quite fragmented. Um, as Larry pointed out, there are sort of different methodologies being used. Um, the methodologies being used for, say, um, AMR are different from those being used for um, infectious disease outbreaks, pandemics, and so on. Um, and those are different, again, from those being used to an analyze the economic burdens of endemic diseases. And I say this having been guilty of all three um, of using different methodologies in this place. Um, I'd say also that there's, so there's silos within the world of economic analysis of microbial threats. And then there's often failures of communication between those who come at this more from a, a public health or clinical perspective and those who are coming at it from more of an economic um, perspective. So I think 
um, we have um, a set of issues around what, what is at stake from an economic perspective, and that underpins the investment case for doing anything about it. And then it's also about the economics of different approaches um, to interventions. Larry stressed the trade-offs issue. I would also say we, we face some pretty interesting uh, economic misalignment of incentives, uh, market failure type issues, which get in the way of what, and, and there are explanatory factors for why we're not pre preparing, investing enough in preparedness, why we're not doing research in new generations of antibiotics. Um, there are good economic explanations for um, why some of these things aren't happening. And simply exhorting them to be different, um, in my view, is not going to work. You have to change some of the economic variables if you want to get um, sustained impact. So what we are going to um, do over the course of the next day and a half is we are going to start um, with some sessions focused on the economic impact of microbial threats. First, those from endemic infectious diseases. Um, second, those from emerging infectious diseases and biological risks. And then third, from the underlying um, threat of antimicrobial resistance. And I think what we will find going through that is, A, the economic risks and threats are large, but B, there's lots of different ways we are looking um, at these problems. And, and some of this reflects the fact that this is genuinely very difficult methodologically. If you think, for example, about um, infectious disease outbreaks, most of the economic cost of an infectious disease outbreak is not actually from the people getting ill. It's from the people getting scared. Um, and it's the change in behavior um, as people try and avoid getting infected. Now, the, the economics of modeling fear are, are difficult, um, extremely difficult to work out um, w what people are actually going to um, do. Later this afternoon, we will switch from the um, economics of the impact of the diseases to the economics of doing something about it. Um, and the incentives, the financing, um, the challenges of financing national preparedness, um, and also the um, issues around uh, accelerating research um, and the development of medical products. Tomorrow, um, we're going to move to more of a kind of working session with um, breakouts, and we're going to talk about um, various aspects of, in a sense, the solution space of um, how we think about development assistance, um, how we actually uh, overcome some of the practical challenges of delivering medical products to the places that, that are where they're needed. We're going to have breakouts around modeling the economic risks, creating a sustainable economic model to stimulate research and development, and changing the incentives um, for governments to invest in national preparedness. This is quite a broad topic. We are covering a lot of territory in the course of the next um, uh, uh, day and a half. But certainly from my uh, perspective, um, I, I would hope that we come out of this um, with more of a shared vision on what is the best, what are the best ways of actually illuminating the economic impact of these sorts of um, threat? And then secondly, what are some of the practical things we can do to use economic tools to unblock some of the impediments to taking mitigation strategies, preparedness, or accelerating research? Um, and also, where can we most profitably use economic tools in order to make the choices we have to make in the interventions? So that is um, our agenda for the next day and a half. Um, just to remind everybody, um, this is um, in public, and we will be producing, um, after the event, um, a document that will um, have a sort of proceedings. Um, it's not going to have a kind of consensus analysis or decisions. It will be a, a, a proceedings um, uh, document. Um, 
So now we should get into the substance. So um, if I can invite our first moderator, who, sorry, I've got my pages wrong. Um, sorry? It's Tom. <laughs> well, I was looking at it, and I had the wrong name. <laughs> Tom, thank you very much.